We have a V8 Chrysler 5.9 liter. We're gonna go through the steps in replacing the water pump. These replacement procedures will be the same for the 5.2 liter. Before performing a cooling system repair, it's recommended to flush the cooling system prior to installing any new parts. With the cooling system properly flushed and drained, we'll begin the repair by removing the negative battery cable. Remove the upper radiator hose. Before starting your repair, you always want to be sure you're working with a cool engine. To ease in the removal of the fan shroud, you'll remove the windshield washer can and the reservoir can. Using a screwdriver, lightly pry on the back side of the can and pull up. These are held in place by dimples into the fan shroud. Using a fan clutch removal tool, remove the fan clutch and set it into the shroud. You can usually rent these tools at most local parts stores. Remove the four retaining bolts holding the shroud in place. As you're removing the fan shroud and fan, be mindful of the radiator not damage it with the fan blade. It's always a good idea to note the belt routing before removing the accessory drive belt. Remove the air cleaner housing. Remove the AC compressor and alternator and set to the side. Remove the retaining bolt for the dipstick. Remove the heater hose from the heater tube. When removing any hose from the cooling system, be sure and capture any residual coolant that may be in the hose. Remove the heater tube from the water pump. Because of time and age of the vehicle, this can become difficult. It's a good idea to use a light penetrating oil to help in removal. By removing the accessory bracket, this will ease the installation of the water pump. It's not uncommon on this application to have a leak at the thermostat housing that is diagnosed as a water pump failure. Be sure and fully diagnose the cooling system before making your repair. Remove the retaining bolts from the water pump and remove the water pump from the engine block. Be sure and capture any residual coolant that may be behind the water pump. Thoroughly clean the gasket surface before installing the new water pump. Before installing the new water pump onto the engine, install the bypass hose fitting. It's not necessary, but it's also a good idea to apply a small amount of anti-seize to the thread area. If using a silicone-based type sealant, only lightly apply it to the gasket surface areas, paying particular attention to the bolt hole area. Using excessive sealant can cause coolant system failures. Install the gasket and pump to the engine block. When tightening the retaining bolts, torque the 30 foot-pounds using a crisscross pattern. And since the thermostat shows signs of leaking, we're going to go ahead and replace the thermostat and gasket. There's a bypass hose that attaches to the back of the water pump. It's a good idea to replace this when doing this repair. Reinstall the accessory drive bracket. Install the idler pulley. Be sure and thoroughly inspect the heater tube, making sure it's not damaged in any way that may hinder its reinstallation. Because of the condition of this tube, we've elected to replace it with a new one. If your heater tube is reusable, you'll have to replace the O-ring on the inlet side of the tube. Install the tube into the water pump and install the heater hose onto the tube. Install the lower radiator hose and install the upper hose onto the thermostat housing. 
Reattach the alternator and air conditioner compressor. Install the air cleaner housing. Install the accessory drive belt. It's always a good idea to make sure that the belt tensioner is within specification. Carefully lower the fan and shroud back into location and reattach to the radiator. Reattach the fan clutch to the water pump. Reinstall the coolant recovery tank and the washer fluid tank. Install the upper radiator hose onto the radiator and reconnect the negative battery cable. Refill the radiator and recovery tank with coolant and distilled water to manufacture specifications. It's a good idea to test your pressure cap. A faulty pressure cap can lead to an inefficient cooling system. If you do not have access to a pressure tester, these are available at your local parts store. Start the vehicle and allow it to reach operating temperature. It's a good idea to turn on the passenger compartment heater to help bleed the air out of the system. Check the cooling system for leaks. Allow the engine to cool off and recheck the coolant levels in the recovery tank and radiator. 